There seems to be a little bit of a trend in this T20 international series between India and Australia. You win the toss and you bowl first. And India would have been very happy because they actually picked up more wickets than they did uh, in the first two T20 internationals. The fact that they kept Australia to 172 for eight meant that they gave their batters a chance. And looking at the Australian scorecard is something that we don't often see. Only three players getting to double figures. Uh, some standout performances by Renuka Singh Thakur as well and Devika Vedia. And they were able to pick up a, a handful of wickets. But for India in their chase, just when they thought they were going, they lost wickets in clumps, as did the Australians in their innings. But unfortunately, they lost them at a crucial time when scoreboard pressure was on. Set batters left, and that meant that India were only able to post 151 for seven. Now, my top three picks, I'm going to have to go with Renuka Singh Thakur. I think the fact that she was able to get out Elisa Healy um, in the first over, uh, I thought it was an excellent decision by the umpire, but also then to come back on and get Grace Harris, who was going ballistic, just was probably the difference with Australia posting 200 and in the end only posting 172. Second, Darcy Brown. Now we haven't seen her so far in this series. She came on to bowl, she bowled the Nova. It went four nine wides. No runs scored off the bat, nine wides. And credit to her, and credit to Elisa Healy and obviously Talia McGrath and Elise Perry, the, the leaders within the group. They spoke to her and she worked through it. She was given an over straight up afterwards. And the next three overs only went for 10 runs and picked up a couple of wickets as well. So credit to her given the horrible start that she had. The third and final pick out of tonight's match, Shafali Verma. Boy, she's just packed full of entertainment and I love the battle that she's having with Megan Shute. Um, again, she deposited her a couple of times over the boundary. Um, there was a, an opportunity for Shute to get a drop chance um, and in the end she finally got to a half century, something that she hasn't been able to do for a while but unfortunately wasn't able to go along into the 60s. That's probably the difference between India and Australia at the moment. Player of the match, Elise Perry, do you ever doubt a legend like Elise Perry? I mean, she started playing T20 cricket in 2009, yet this was her fastest 50 for Australia. 75, her highest score as well in this format. And just when there was some commentary around and dropped from the side as well because of her strike rate. She has used this year in WBBL with the Sydney Sixers just to come out and go bang from ball one. I think she was six off six. And then after that, her strike rate just increased. It got up to 159. Plus, let's remember she bowled one over, only went for two runs. Uh, and that is really important in the context of the match. Moment of the game, I'm gonna to have to go with Megan Shoot, simply because she actually hasn't picked up a wicket in the first two games, went over 10 runs and over. Now this is a side that is used to Megan Shoot being really effective. And I think probably taking the wicket of Harman Preet Kaur at the time that she did and what was required by the Australian team was crucial. On the flip side, it was a terrible um, time for Harman Preet to, to get out for India because she needed to stay in if they were going to cross the line. Impact performer for Grace Harris, that's what she's there for. And we've seen it before, Commonwealth Games, rewind your mind, Commonwealth Games, first round, Australia were in trouble, Ash Gardner, Grace Harris put in a partnership that won them the game. Again, she got 41 off 18. And the fact that she can clear the boundary with ease, she hits the ball so powerfully, like it is extremely hard to catch up with the ball, especially at Brabourne Stadium. So she, again, was the difference between probably Australia getting 150 and in the end that 172. Lessons for tonight's match. I think from Australia's point of view, they'd be extremely happy that they got across the line. Didn't score enough runs 
and their fielding. Their fielding was poor. I think four opportunities were missed. I don't know if it's the heat. A uh, few people aren't physically as well. India does challenge tourists, um, change in diet, um, change in humidity, different type of heat. All of those things play on you and it does sap your energy completely differently to what conditions are like in Australia. Um, also a big WBBL straight into this series. So maybe a few tired players as well, but they weren't as sharp as they normally were. So yes, they'd be happy with the win, but they'd want to improve. For India, I mean, the question still goes the top. Top order need to finish off a match. And this is where I probably dig a little bit deeper. Yeah, Shafali, Verma, Shmidi, Mandana, Harman, Prikor, they've shown us what they can do. Yet we probably haven't seen the best of Jamima Rodriguez. And when I look into her numbers just a little bit more, surprisingly, in India, in T20 cricket, she only averages 13. That's the lowest of any place in the world. Now, that's a concern given that she's playing for India, the majority of the games against India. Also, against Australia, she does struggle. That back of a length, they don't feed that cover drive. A lot quicker, faster bowlers, that bowl around that hip height, probably chest height as well. Hard for her to score. I think they'll stick with her. She's got a few things, she's got a few games to kind of figure it out. Otherwise, her place could be up for grabs once again. Uh, next match, quick turnaround again for these sides. Uh, 17th of December, Brabant Stadium, Australia leading 2-1. Can India fight back? They have to. Otherwise, the series goes to Australia.